Um, I'm Chris Ganley and I'm here today with Ian Allen to talk you through Pond. Having looked around the room, I think quite a few of you have already logged into Pond at some point or another. So I'm guessing that we've got varying levels of detailed knowledge and experience in Pond. But just so that I have got a quick assessment, can I have a show of hands if you've never actually logged into Pond before? Okay. And a show of hands if you have logged in quite a few times and you feel relatively comfortable and confident in Pond. Great, okay. Well, what we're talking about today is Pond in general, and hopefully we're gonna be able to cover enough information to keep you all occupied and entertained for 75 minutes without having to dance and juggle at the front. Um, so the reason that I'm here is that up until July last year, I was teaching in London for seven years as an English teacher in secondary schools. And before that, I spent two years teaching at Wainuiamata High School, uh, just outside of Wellington. So my experiences in the classroom as a secondary school English teacher, and now I'm here on behalf of M4L, mostly as a copywriter, was most of my job there. And then some days I get to call away and do this sort of thing, which is quite interesting. And I'll let Ian explain what he's here. Um, I'm the product owner of Pond, and in a former life I was at um, Gibson Girls Grammar School many years ago, uh, and then moved into the private sector, um, <coughs> and focusing on designing mainly mobile solutions in emerging markets. So solutions for people that didn't have bank accounts so they could pay for things with their mobile phones. So I've come from both ends of the spectrum of really tech savvy, uh, really tech savvy users and a complete officer. Um, and so it was a great combination of, of my skills to come and work with So as you can see from this first slide, we've got a few hashtags that we're using. There's the Hulu one, and the Connected Educator Month one, and also our Lean for our Pond hashtag, which is pretty busy quite often. We've got a few key 20 users who you'll find there all the time. Hello, Gerald, if you're watching. Um, and there is a Google Doc, which you can find on the link here. Feel free, we'll refer to that towards the end of the session and we'll have some dedicated time to fill that in. But feel free to have a look on that if, uh, if you're here in the room at any point or if you're at home at any point. So, first of all, where did Pond come from? Ian? Um, I'll just start. In case you don't know, um, Network for Learning is that company, that crown company that's connecting uh, as many schools as want to be connected to the N4L managed network, and that's about 900 schools now, and that's all fully funded ultra-fast broadband. Um, so that's that one side of the business focused on the managed network, and the other side of the business is all around a, a layer over the top of, of all that, and just the internet in general, so that we can help deliver great content and services to you all. Um, and that leads to where did, where did Pond come from? Uh, it was this time last year at ULEARN that we demoed a really early prototype of what we thought this infrared portal, as it was called at that stage, might be and how it might be useful for, for teachers and students. And about six months prior to that, um, one of the company's early statements of intent had a, had a little line that said, and, and deliver a portal for content and services. And us as a company, we're primarily a tech company and we're in no position to start endorsing content that you should be using in the classroom or, or recommending any content. Um, so that made us step back and think, well, well, who is in a position to do that? And it was all of you. So that made us think, we really need to create something that makes it really easy for you to discover resources and then share resources that you have used yourselves. And then the value of these resources will ultimately be determined by the community of teachers and providers, um, by the way they tag things, the way they use things, um, how often they're appearing in search results, all sorts of things like that can help determine whether something is trustworthy for you to use in the classroom. So Pond has developed around three main cores and we'll go through these uh, core values. We'll go through these uh, as we go through our demonstration. So the first one is discovery. So the aim is that you're going to discover not only colleagues who, are, who share a common interest with you, but also resources or even a new way to use old and familiar resources. Uh, what it's also focused on is sharing. So the sharing of innovative ideas and best practices outside of your school uh, and looking at the broader nationwide community of teachers. And finally, to help you grow. 
So it grows a community of subject teachers or age group teachers or even as a school but also to help you grow as individuals because you should be able to find something or someone within Pond that you can connect with that offers you a bit of inspiration and will want to make you drive forward uh, in your own practice. So we've had a few stages of rollout so far for Pond. Um, in February, Pond was opened up to about 15 advisors. 15 advisors, and these were teachers who have had a uh, relationship with ed for for quite some time. And they were invited in when Pond was in its very, very fresh, fragile stage, and they were encouraged to give constructive feedback and were very much a part of the development process. After that, we opened it up to pioneer educators. So these were people who we hoped were going to be a bit tech savvy, going to be innovative, prepared to try something new and to give us some feedback. And from that first drive, we aimed for 500 and we got about 700 teachers. Some people really loved it and got in and went, great, let's do this. Other people went, oh, not quite there yet and sat back a little bit. And we're starting to see them come forward now. Um, and they were really important in helping us shape Pond to where it is today. Okay, the next stage of our rollout was Pioneer Schools uh, and this happened in last, in term three. So 16 schools were chosen from around the country. They were chosen for their variance in, in size um, and geographic location and their sort of demographic role that they had in the intake. And they were chosen for the purpose of being able to give us some feedback about how we could extend this to a broader, larger, school-wide community. This was really important because this has helped us shape and develop the next stage of rollout, which is actually the Make a Splash program. So Make a Splash program uh, has just been launched. People are registering their school or their department or their syndicate, whatever group of teachers you would like to work with. It's a six week program that takes you through week by week focusing on a different feature, on a different skill uh, and a different functionality within Pond. It can be as demanding or as undemanding as you would like to make it. Um, but the idea is that it slowly introduces Pond to a group of staff within your school environment. So, registration process. If you haven't already logged in, this is roughly what it looks like. The third screen there allows you to set your details up within Pond, confirm your name, the name that you'd like to be called within the Pond environment. Uh, and that's about it, isn't it? Yep. So, this is one of the key questions that we're going to focus on today. How could Pond be useful in planning, resourcing and then teaching in your school? Now you can change that from school to department to syndicate, whatever kind of grouping that you can think of. But really what we're looking at is how it can help you, because that's why it's been designed, that's why it's there. Uh, and how can it help you develop as a teacher? Clearly that's what you're all interested in doing, because that's why you're here, I assume, at ULEARN for the next couple of days. And that's what we're going to be focusing on. This is one of the questions in the Google document. If you'd like to refer to this, you can do so now, or we'll give you some time towards the end to do so. Right, Ian. us for a few minutes, we'll be able to get one of our colleagues' phones and we'll just run off that. Okay. 
Okay, um, looks like we've got some connectivity at the moment, so I'll, I'll get cracking into it. Um, if you're not familiar with Pond, this is typically how it looks when you log in uh, or when you sign in for the first time. Um, we change this background out, out from time to time. Um, and it's pretty familiar already that we've got a really search-centred view of the world because that's what we all do when we go to Google, that's how we, how we look for resources. Uh, one difference that we want to hopefully help with is a lot of the early feedback when we were uh, researching some of the focus groups and things that have been done previously by the Ministry was uh, teachers and students had a hard time finding stuff on the internet that they could trust and could safely use in, the, in their classroom environment. Um, because if you do a Google search, uh, there's no way of telling you whether this is a useful resource for the classroom or whether other teachers have been using this resource. Uh, or it might be that the resource that you actually want is on about page three and no one really goes past page two on Google search. So I'm going to play the role of a, of a couple of teachers here. I'll start as a, as a science teacher. And in this case, rather than having gone to Google to look for something, I'm going to use Pond and I'm going to search for cell biology. So I'll just, I'll just talk briefly through these. What we're doing here, as you'll see in that first column, that's all the stuff, all the content and resources that are already in our Pond catalogue. And, and most of these have been added by teachers just like yourself. So I've seen something they've liked that on the internet and they've quickly added it to Pond. And I'll, and I'll show how quickly we, and easily we want you to be able to do that. So in that, that's in the left column. So that's where all the good stuff is going to start to appear and all the stuff that you can start to trust as having been useful. Because another teacher has gone to the effort of adding this and perhaps explained how they might have used it in the classroom. And that's a much safer bet than looking on perhaps the right-hand column, which is just a general web search. So what we're trying to do is, if you can't find the resources in Pond, uh, we still have that last resort of doing a web search uh, like you might otherwise do. Uh, we often get asked at this point, uh, why are you using Bing for your search? Because nobody uses Bing. Um, the simple answer is, We've managed to form an agreement with Microsoft to use their search, and we can't do that with Google at the moment. We're trying to get an agreement with them so we can use their search, but it's a, it's a tricky negotiation. We would love it to be there. We would also include Wikipedia and several other general web searches in there. Now, something I haven't touched on is this growing middle column, and this is where we're connecting directly with services uh, that you all use uh, quite often, even daily. So you can see here, that search the NZQA website, so it's saving you having to go out to NZQA to find those resources. Uh, we're also searching TKI. Um, a lot of the early feedback when we were designing the early prototypes was it's really hard to find things on TKI. Um, the search engine doesn't work quite how I imagined it, it would. So already teachers have found it useful to have one place that they can quickly search NZQA, they can quickly search TKI. Uh, we've got several other ones in here, and we're growing this list as soon as we get an agreement with each of these providers. So we have the Ministry for Culture and Heritage, we have the Science Learning <coughs> Hub, there's TVNZ is in there, and even ETV is a, is a provider that we've connected with. Now, is, are any of you familiar with the ETV service, your school a subscriber? So schools that subscribe to ETV get access to a huge amount of, of video content that they're recording all the time. And now Pond is recognising if you're a, at a school that is an ETV subscriber, you can now search into those ETV archives of video and you can play them back uh, right within Pond. So you don't have to spin out into ETV service, you don't have to uh, open up a special application or anything. You can play that video right within Pond. If your school is not an ETV subscriber, then they, you'll be able to still see that middle column and you'll be able to access that, but you won't be able to watch the video. Okay, so it's a little bit tormenting at times because sometimes those videos are fantastic. Um, the same goes for the web searches. You can play these videos uh, within Pond. And if you're browsing and you've found something, actually, this is great. This, I should really add this to Pond so other people have disco can discover it easily. You just click on that link and already it's fetching the information needed for that, from that site. Um, it's even prompting me that perhaps that's a resource that's already in Pond. Um, maybe you just want to contribute to that existing resource, or maybe you want to add the new one. And then the only really required field that we ask is that you give it some educational suitability. And that might be, well, this is suitable for biology. Maybe it's suitable at NCA. 
level two. Um, and I might even know what unit standard or achievement standard it relates to. Um, sorry, I'm not a science teacher, I don't know offhand, but I can perhaps guess. And that's actually registering against that item that this is, an, this is relevant to a particular standard. And so that when I add this resource, that's now in the catalogue. So the next person that's doing a search for cell biology is going to find that video that I've just added. Uh, and also the next person that perhaps searches for that standard to see what's available for them to use will find that that's, that video's in the pond already. Um, now I'm just going to click on one of these items so you can get an idea of what these things look like. Now this is an item that was added in much the same way as I just showed you then. This is uh, Elliot Atterich, he's one of our uh, favourite pioneer teachers. Um, he's, he's added a whole range of content, he's um, really into the biology area and science area. And He's a really great example of um, how to add really detailed resources. He adds resources that are either really detailed or might only have a little brief sentence or just educational suitability. Um, Ian will shortly show you what a learning idea looks like and Elliot has got quite a few of those. So if you're looking for an example of a, of a really great active person within Pond and the sorts of things that you can do as a really active participant within Pond, then Elliot is a good person to have a look for. And you can find him just by searching in the uh, bar in the top left hand corner. Okay. Um, and if you're perhaps short of time and you've just done your quick search and you've found this great resource and you've thought, hey, I'm going to use this in my next lesson. Sorry. Um, we'd still really love you to do things like, hey, I'm going to give that a car pie. And so that's meaning, that's recognising that, hey, thanks, Elliot, that was good, this, I like this, this is helpful. And also, it also means I'm saving that as a favourite for myself. So when I go into my own area, all those things that I've given a car pie to uh, show up in the, my contributions that I've said are great. And so that would mean that if I perhaps visited Elliot, I can see the resources that he's liked, and then we can start building off each other's discoveries. Can we have a show of hands? Who uses Pinterest in here, either personally or professionally? OK. Are you recognising some similar features? Yeah. Um, and now just scrolling down, um, perhaps you've seen this resource and you've actually thought, hey, this is good for another area uh, of the curriculum. Uh, you, might, you might think, yep, that's right, this is good for science, and we'd love you to all just start clicking up, upvoting all these tags that have been added by others, because that, ha that starts to add value to the search results when somebody's searching for something, the more stuff is getting upvoted and um, the more relevance it's going to have. Um, but I might also want to say, actually, this is good for human biology. Not human. So that's an example of, of quickly being able to add a bit of extra value. I didn't create that resource, it was created by Elliot. But we really want people to go in and add additional value to that resource, um, not just rely on, on individuals to do everything. And typically, you can share your thoughts, um, you can give it a review if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, and these, all these comment boxes support a bit of formatting, so if you wanted to do a little bullet list of how something, what the key competencies might be, we really want to encourage those kinds of things. You can add a link to something that will make a link to another site, if that's what you wanted to do. And then if you perhaps had, had seen this site and it sparked a great idea, we want to give you a really quick way to just say, hey, this is the title of my idea, it's relevant to, say, human biology, NCA Level 1. And I just note down the idea. Uh, it doesn't need to be long, but if you want to flesh out the idea, but what you're doing is you're adding a little more context, context to that resource that another teacher might then discover and maybe add a little more extra context to. Learning ideas are not meant to be lesson plans, so they're not meant to be long and detailed and involved. It could just be as, as long as a sentence or two explaining how you could use this resource either as a starter or as a plenary or throughout your actual lesson. So the idea is just to prompt either yourself or to suggest other ways for other teachers. You don't have to have done it in your classroom, it can simply still be an idea. 
So we said Elliot's a, a great guy to check out and follow. Um, so you'll see that every user has this own space for themselves and it keeps track of all the things that they've contributed. Um, and it means that I can browse to other, other teachers and see their contributions. Um, I can see perhaps the learning ideas that they've contributed. So here's Elliot. He's written a, a bit of a learning idea around how to make use of this product that's actually provided by a provider on Pond, uh, which is a really good example of how things can work together amongst teachers and providers. And of course, as me being another teacher, I can say, hey, can't buy it. And that's sort of starting to increase the value of that resource. So if you're in Pond right now, you'll be able to see that you have uh, the contributions that you've made. And also those things that I've give, been given a car pie to as I go, which is a great way to, you might quickly see something and you, it's a bit like saving it for later. You just, you're just marking it, saying that you like it, saying that it's a favourite. Um, I'm just going to spin out into the catalogue now. Um, when, we first, when we first released this, we didn't really have this concept of uh, selecting your subject and selecting your year level because we thought everybody just searches for things now and you just bang in your search term and you find your things that way. But there's actually a lot of us that still like the, the structure of I just want to find my subject and my year level and see what's there. Um, So we've got the New Zealand curriculum subjects in here that you can use to filter our catalogue. Um, we even have a whole lot of extra stuff that you can use to further filter the catalogue. So I might just so I might just have some network issues. So that's, that's just an example of uh, filtering down the catalogue on that, using that uh, more traditional structure and learning, uh, learning area hierarchy. Uh, you'll see on the left here that we also have my interests and every, every teacher in Pond has their own profile that they can set up and you can add whatever interests uh, you have into there and the nice thing is that you can, they end up behaving like shortcuts for the catalogue so um, I'm particularly interested in literature. And not only is that a handy way for me to get quick access to the resources that I'm, I'm interested in, but it also means that if I'm another teacher, an English teacher that is also interested in literature, it helps me find that other teacher that, that has specified that their interests are in literature. Um, so, Having found this literature resource, I've also discovered another teacher uh, that I didn't know about prior to this. And so I'm going to follow him, which means if you're familiar with Twitter or even Facebook, we all have these activity streams that we start to see the stuff that the people that I follow are doing. And you also that means that you'll also find that in your own me space, we have what we're calling ripples. We can and see that Carol and Stuart's been quite busy today, adding things to Pond. Yeah, I'll, I'll dip into that. And so this is a this is a nice thing to have. Perhaps you're just sitting on the couch at home, uh, watching a bit of TV. You throw it on and you start browsing, and you start discovering those that sort of passive discovery of resources that that like-minded people have been sharing in Pond. 
So this comes back to those core uh, values that we based Pond around in the start. So this is one of the discovery features. Uh, so through the search engine and also through your ripples, you're able to discover other teachers and other resources that are really relevant to you and uh, fine-tuned and refined to your interests and tastes. Now, um, Carolyn just mentioned uh, this bucket that she created. Uh, this is a new feature uh, that if you've been in Pond for some time, uh, you would have been crying out for it if you've contributed a lot of things. Uh, and we got it very early feedback saying, yeah, it's great to be able to share all these resources, but now I've got 200, of 200 random collection of resources that I have no way of structuring. And on top of that, I've seen these great resources that other people have shared that I have no ability to pull together into my own collection. So we created uh, these buckets that we've just released uh, this week. And every resource now, you'll see that there is a little add to bucket icon. Um, and I have already have a bucket here, World War I Poetry Unit, that I'll show later. But actually, this goes into a new bucket. And I want to make a book about, uh, a, a bucket about getting boys reading. And so just like that, it's created that bucket, but it's a draft, because you might be working on things, you might be collecting a whole lot of resources, and you don't want to publish it straight out into Pond for everyone to discover while you're still working on it. So whenever you create these buckets, they're drafts until you're ready to put it out there for others to see. Now with Term 4 starting next week, you've probably all done all of your planning and you know exactly what you're doing for the next 10 weeks ahead. But can anybody see the value of these features so far for looking forward to 2000? Yeah, 2015, and the planning that you're going to need to do for that. Yep. So you can already find resources that other teachers have used, that they have authenticated and validated, uh, that they might have added ideas to, but you can also collate all of these resources and share them within your school or within a wider community. So, and if you had been watching that as, as Chris was speaking, you would have seen that I added uh, three, maybe three resources to that bucket. Really easy, the drop down menu's right there. You just click on the bucket and it's in there. And so it's still a draft, remember? But now I can go in and see that bucket. It's still looking pretty empty. And it's just collecting all those resources in a, in a pre, pretty standard list of tiles. You created one? I created one. Yeah. Okay, go to me and then contributions. And it will say bucket. Yep. Oh. And we've just learned a very important lesson. Always hit save. Always hit save. So, rather than doing that, I'll edit this existing bucket. So, there's a bit we can do with these. If you actually had collected a whole lot of resources together, but you wanted to turn it into a bit of a sequence of learning, perhaps you wanted the, uh, it to be discovered so that they started with watching a video that might have been shared from YouTube. You might want to follow up with that, uh, a piece of research to follow that up with. Uh, so we're letting you order these things that are in your bucket and for every item that's in it you can give some notes that might add a little more context to it. And what this means is that the real value of this is that now if someone was to be searching for World War I poetry, uh, we've got the centenary coming up next year, they have the ability to discover this, this collection of this great collection of resources that uh, Chris has previously put together. So that has already saved me a, a heap of time to have to collate some resources together, maybe package it into a lesson, 
Um, and rather than just say having found that video on its own, I've found this video as part of a sequence of learning that I can use in the classroom. Now of course you don't have to use them as I've put them together, you can take, pick apart all the parts that you actually want to use and you can reform. You can even take resources from one bucket and put it into, into another bucket of your own. Okay, so that way you've got more discovery happening, you've got more passive inspiration going on uh, and hopefully things will start to kind of web together for you. Yeah. With students? Yeah. Uh, can touch on that. Yeah. Yeah, so at the moment it's it's you'll see that it's very controlled access to uh, to teachers through ESA. What we're looking to do is open up a degree of limited public access early next year. So that just means anyone can go and see that some resources have been added in here. You don't see all the, the granular comments and the, some of the things that have been talked about, but you'll see that resources have been added. And then the next step is to start to bring students in as well. Uh, we've got another session today talking about what does it mean to have students in here too? What are some of the things we're going to need to be aware of? Um, they might even have a slightly different user experience, but we totally believe that students should be having access to this, these kind of resources too. Um, we would just have means in place to say, look, I'm sharing this, but this is just a teacher resource. Or I'm sharing this to this private group we've created uh, because we're working on an assessment, for example. The idea of Pond is not to kind of replace any Moodles that you might have or VR lens that you have operating, but to work with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and with that degree of public access, that also allows us to start to do those things like share this to Moodle or share this to our Knowledge Net or share this to Twitter um, so others can just fetch those links and have a look at them. Um, yeah, so you'll, you'll see that that little bucket icon, well, folder icon, is now on just about any resource in Pond. And while you're browsing away through Pond, you can really quickly start adding buckets, adding things to buckets to create these uh, coherent collections of content. And I just thought I'd add that you can also put teachers into buckets. So you might just want to create, hey, these are the best science teachers in Pond. Uh, really great for a new user to come in and find that there's already this collection of, of great teachers that another teacher has put together. Or you might just want to collect the teachers that are in your department uh, into a handy bucket. So if you uh, partake in the Make a Splash program or anything like that, you could actually put all of the people in your department or your syndicate into one bucket so that you're able to share resources um, and the like with them. Talk about... Um, oops, no. Upper. OK, so one of the things that we wanted to cover today was for those people who are a little bit more confident and experienced in Pond, some of the things that we've learnt over the last couple of months from either the pioneer educators who we've worked with or the pioneer schools. And one example is um, Upper Harbour Primary School have used educational suitability tags to not only tag resources, but to tag themselves. So that means that within the community, by putting in their acronym, you can find all of the teachers at Upper Harbour Primary School, which is fantastic. But also, if you've got a catalogue, you can also find all of the resources because they're adding them to each resource that they add to Pond, they're adding that tag. So that's one little hack and one little way around uh, buckets before buckets were introduced, uh, and also groups that Upper Harbour have managed to come up with. So it's all about personalising Pond to you and to your school and making it work for you. This wasn't developed and designed for us sitting in an office, it was developed and designed for you guys in the classroom. So the way that you use it is really important, but also the feedback uh, that you give us and our observations of how you're using it will then directly influence the direction that it takes in terms of its development down the track. Yeah, and if you're, if you're a heavy Twitter user, you'll be, or even if you're not, you'll be pretty familiar with hashtags. You can even do, use that suitability within Pond in a similar way. So you do things like ULEARN14, and then you can start to see the things that have been added to Pond already that are associated with ULEARN14. Uh, another, another example of how you could use something like this, uh, if you're a part of the EdChat NZ group, 
and so you have those sessions in the evenings uh, where you're all sharing stuff. You can start also sharing it into Pond, tag it as EdChatNZ. Then after those sessions, you can always just come into Pond and you can find all those resources that have been getting added in that flurry of activity on Twitter. Um, Chris was just mentioning those interests there. You'll see that you've all got a space to edit your profile, and that's where we're talking about you can put in whatever interests that you have. Um, one thing that's really helpful to do is put in if you're a primary, a primary teacher or a secondary teacher or you're particularly focused on upper primary, and that's a really nice way for new users to come into the community and find the other primary teachers that are in there. It's as simple as that, but by introducing these interests in here, you can also refine the community and the catalogue based on those interests. So it's a faster way for you to find exactly what you're looking for, either people who you're looking for or resources that you're looking for. Um, I thought I'd touch on a couple of things around adding stuff to Pond. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of, uh, we've introduced a lot of concepts about using things that are already in Pond, but I want to show that it's also really easy to add things to Pond. Um, I won't go into this in too much detail now because we've only just released it and it's a little buggy. But if you're, it looks like a lot of you are active Pinterest users and you're probably used to having something in your browser in Chrome also to, as you're browsing to say, I'm pinning this, to, I'm pinning this into Pinterest. Uh, we want to do something similar. So if I was to be on... Perhaps I was browsing, browsing the web in the normal way that I do. Uh, I see something I like. And we want to let you add that, add that to Pond directly from your browser. So it's fetched all that information from the site. Again, we would just ask that you give it a bit of suitability, some context. Uh, you could tag it, chat NZ, if that's what you wanted to do. And then you add it to Pond and you carry on on your way. Uh, and then you can come back into Pond and you can start to organise those things that you've found, put them into buckets. So for this to work, A, you need to be signed into Pond, uh, and B, you need to get the Chrome extension from uh, the Chrome Web, web Store. store. Uh, so you've just got a Chrome Web Store and put in Pond and it should come up. You'll recognise our little logo. So like Ian said, this is brand new, it just was released on Monday. Yeah, so, a bit of patience please. It's a little fledgling out there. Uh, but at the moment, that's all you need to do. You can briefly, very easily, very quickly add things to Pond. If you're used to Pinterest and pinning things, or if you're used to Evernote and other apps like that, uh, and Chrome extensions, it's as simple as that. So the only thing that you need to put in there should be the educational suitability. And you only need to put in one word for that. Um, you'll see the big yellow add button. This will be familiar to people who are already in Pond. Uh, at any stage, that's right there. I can click that. I can paste the web address that I have in there, or I can add it directly from the search results here. And also, just released this week uh, because we got a lot of feedback around it. Uh, a lot of teachers saying, I need to add more than just links to web resources that are out there on the internet. I've got a whole lot of great lesson plans and documents and worksheets that I've created that I want to contribute back to the community. So now you can upload a document as well. Um, we're limiting it to typical office documents at the moment, your, your PowerPoints and your Excel spreadsheets and the Apple equivalents and the open office equivalents. So you can start to imagine that you could upload your lesson plan that you might have previously created, and it's a great lesson plan, and you put it in a bucket, and then you find these other resources that are in Pond that are relevant to that lesson plan, and then you start adding those to that bucket, and then for other people that go in and search for something similar, they see that you've created this lesson plan that you've given back to the community, uh, the resources that are, relative, are related to it, and you could even, if it was a secondary resource, you could give it a quick uh, NZQA standard tag. So if someone's searching just for the tag, the NZQA standard number, they can discover that great content you've put together as well. One thing that does need to be brought up at this point is ownership um, of items. And as you scroll down, you can actually see that down on the page. Um, 
depending on where your school is at in terms of creating a Creative Commons licence, your school may own your lesson plans, so you may need to check with them ahead of time about how, what the situation is regarding uploading and sharing of things like lesson plans, PDFs, PowerPoints and the rest of it. Does anybody in here have a Creative Commons licence in their school that's active and they know about? Okay. Are you able to share your... Yep. Cool. Are you sh shareable? So it's just something that's worth bringing up and, and uh, checking before you go loading things. Um, something we've, we've stressed throughout this whole year it's been now since we first introduced it to some teachers from a, from a prototype to where it is now. Uh, I still believe we're only done about 15% of what we have in our roadmap of things we want to uh, provide to you. And this is, Pond is only ever going to be as good as you all want it to be. So that's why we always welcome uh, feedback, and that's right at within Pond as well. So you can say you're frustrated uh, and you have a suggestion, maybe we're doing something in a really obscure way that's not at all user friendly. We want that feedback. Uh, and the same really goes for what's in the catalogue. Uh, we sometimes get uh, new users into Pond. Uh, they might be a, a German teacher, for example, and they say, yeah, but there's nothing in here for, for me as a German teacher. And for better or worse, it again is up to all the teachers in New Zealand to start, and providers, to start contributing and sharing the resources. Um, us as a company are certainly in no position to start putting up the content that we think you should be using. If you want to think about TripAdvisor as your example for that, TripAdvisor is only as good as the uh, people who actually comment and review on things. If nobody's going to make any reviews, then you're not going to know where and where you should go and have dinner in Rotorua later on this evening. So that goes back to what Ian said at the very start. At M4L, most of the people who work in our office are not teachers. Most of them are techies, okay? They're not going to know what's going to work with your Year 7 class on a Friday at 2.30 in the afternoon. But you guys know, and that's why you're here. So, uh, that's why it's up to you to add as many resources, to comment on the resources that are in there, to add value to the resources, and work together as a community, as you probably already do within your schools. Yeah, because the more you contribute, the more little tags you add to pe items other people have added, the more carpi you give to things that other people have contributed, the more valuable the search results become as well, because I can do a search for Mariki. it might originally do it just by relevance, but I might want to see what are the resources that people have liked the most in here, and it's like, that's a pretty safe guarantee that I can take that resource and run with it right now. I think that's about more. Should go back to our slides? Uh, and this is some things that we're looking at. Uh, is there any, anything that you've seen so far that you're confused about or you're wondering about or you're wondering where it might go or you think there's something missing uh, that you want us to talk about at this point uh, uh, that we can be directed to within Pond? Uh, we will. Uh, it's, it's one of these things we're trying to get something out the door first and then we get the feedback on whether it's useful or not. So it's more likely that we would get our Chrome extension right and then when people are comfortable with those features then we can start to port that to the other browsers. Uh, the same goes for uh, apps and things for the iPad and the iPhone and the Android tablets. At the moment Pond will work on those, it will scale down, uh, it will work on your mobile so you can browse your ripples on your mobile while you're sitting on the bus, um, but we don't have an app yet, uh, it's a big big task for us to do, uh, and we still want to get some of this core functionality right before we start building an app, only to have to dump that functionality because no one likes it. Any other questions? Yep. I'm sorry, would it be possible for you guys to repeat before you answer the question to set it, but just for the live stream? Uh -huh. so, so that um, the question can be heard. Sure, so the question is how do you add a bucket? Okay, how to add a bucket or how to view a bucket. I'll show you both. Um, in the ad form, you can find it there uh, and it, you can quickly summarise what you want your bucket 
to be about and what the suitability might be. Or perhaps more conveniently, on everything that's in Pond, there's either that little icon there, uh, where I can either put it into one of my existing buckets, or I can add it to a new bucket by creating that bucket right there. Uh, and if I open any of these, again, that add to bucket drop down is there, and I can add things just as I go. And then I can later go back to edit that bucket um, to start to reorganise it and maybe add some notes to the things that I've put in it. Okay, and then do you invite people to buckets or do they have to find the bucket? Uh, no, they'll just find it. Um, but if they are following you, they would see that in their ripples, their activity stream, that you've created this bucket and, and they'll discover it that way. Okay, and so then. Uh, yeah, we'd look at that down the line. We're, we're going to introduce groups uh, at some stage, either late this year or early next year. So you could actually create a group uh, for your English department, and you could share stuff either privately in that group or open to others to see. Uh, and then we'd look at ways where you could all either contribute to the same bucket, or one of you would contribute to the bucket. Ways that you can add to somebody else's bucket might be, see, I'm in Carolyn's you learn bucket. I could go down here and I could add thoughts or reviews at the bottom and I can add links in there or I can still add learning ideas. Okay. So that's another way that you can add to somebody else's bucket but at the moment you can't have lots of people contributing resources and on top. Students can't sign up at the moment. At the moment, there's not access uh, set up for students. So Pond is meant to be a trusted environment where um, other teachers can trust that the quality of your resources and that you are an educator and, and everything else, because otherwise it doesn't work, you know? There's no authentication behind it. But um, have you, how did you get access to Pond? Through your ES still or? Okay. Yeah, so a definite next step is to bring students in. Um, something we wanted to do, and quite purposefully, is to first get teachers in here to make sure we're on the right track, um, so that they get a feel for it, so that when our students do have access to some of these resources, uh, everyone's comfortable with, with where we've got to. Uh, and it's looking like early ne next year is our best bet. Uh, you have to remember there's all these student management systems out there in New Zealand, and we need to figure out a way that they can all con connect and they have one student identity and then when that one student moves to another school it recognises that they've moved schools and, and handles all those difficult processes. Once content is uploaded by a user, is it then also checked again? Are there other checks in place? I'll repeat that question back. So once content is uploaded by a user, is it checked again? No, the answer is no. Not by us. So the idea is that, um, that you guys will moderate the quality of content um, or resources that are added to Pond. So um, through the search algorithms, stuff that's good will float to the top and stuff that's, that's left will drop by the wayside. But there is an ability for you to report something if you think that it's inappropriate or, um, yeah. Andrew, or the more different. technical side of that, we do want to have processes that run in the background so that if links have been added and have since the links moved or the links dead, we want us to start taking those things out of our catalogue. We can try and move that resource to its new URL or otherwise we'll just say, look, this, this is no longer available. So we don't want you all discovering this resource that, that's broken. But the idea is hopefully that you're not going to, uh, that we're not going to have trolls in Pond, that people will actually be responsible in their, in their professionalism and, and give professional responses about whether or not resources do work or whether or not they don't. What works for one person really might not work for another. And I think we all acknowledge that when you're in the classroom, what works with one class won't work with another. But if it's completely way off or really inappropriate, I'm sure that you guys will... Let us know. Um, th th just adding, there was that question around buckets and who can add to the bucket. Uh, you can even see though from this bucket that Carolyn has created that some of the re this resources come from core education. Uh, she's just added to, it to her own bucket. Uh, the following, the other resources come from Carolyn uh, and she's also just included a straight URL in there to get access to some a Google Doc. So these buckets can have resources from any number of contributors. They're not 
only for your own things. And you can put a bucket in a bucket. So you might find all the best buckets and you make a super bucket. A well? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Uh, what was I going to say? It's gone. Uh, yeah, just I thought I'd add on that, on the feedback side of things, all that feedback that you send to us Uh, in Pond comes straight into our, our, the tool that we use to manage our development. So every day that feedback is being seen and it might either be something that's broken and we urgently need to fix or it might be a great idea for an upcoming feature. And we also publish our roadmap of things that we, we want to develop next in Pond and we'll change that roadmap based on the feedback we get from you all. So like I said earlier, it's, it's going to be as good as you guys want it to be. Uh, we want it to make it really easy and great for you to use and so we need your feedback to do that. So a few things are coming up soon um, in the development roadmap that have been designed based on feedback and, and based on observations of how people are using Pond, but aim to make Pond even better for you. Um, a little like that new user that comes in and can't find anything that's relevant to them. We also want to start having ways that great content is cur curated together into, into what we'd call features or trending things. So with the centenary coming up, we might want to curate great, the great resources around World War I so that we can then just say, hey, look, go into Pond, search for World War I, you'll find all the great resources there. Um, we're working with uh, Digital New Zealand, uh, who manage the National Library and things, to run a mix and mash competition uh, event next year and we're going to be putting all those resources that can be used for that in Pond. And then we can just say, look, go into Pond, search for Mix and Mash, for example, and you'll find all that great content that you can reuse in the classroom. But something like this is particularly really helpful for um, first-year teachers or beginner teachers and people who just generally need some inspiration. So you get given a new unit, um, foisted upon you and you're not quite sure even where to start to find resources. Something like this will be really helpful for adding inspiration and, and giving you some ideas. Yeah, and there's, there's really great content being added by providers as well. Uh, Auckland Museum is an example. Uh, they've put up some of their content, but then they've also created learning ideas around uh, having classroom trips to do things around World War One. So there's some great provider content to be discovered as well, same as publishers um, are starting to list all their books and perhaps ex excerpts from their books and then you can bounce out and, and obtain those books. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on in, in this but I just want to give you an idea that we also want to do some interesting things around location. We'll know what school you're at and we'd love to be able to for you to be able to see what else is happening in our area or go down south, what, what are they studying, what's trending at the moment on the west coast. Um, so you can quickly do some sort of geo searches. We're not going to track you on your mobile phones, but we do know that you'll be at, you go to a particular school so we can, we can start to provide you with the resources that, that are being shared and worked on in your area. Uh, we want to just add really easy way for you to, you just might not be sure of something and all you want to do is get a question out there and then your followers would see that and then they can provide some answers to it. Just that, that Q&A type of solution. And this is something we get a lot of feedback from our, uh, the Twitter junkies and providers who, uh, who manage a lot of content on their websites and things or they might have a YouTube channel that has a whole lot of videos. Um, there's some great teachers sharing an amazing amount of resources and links to great content on Twitter. We'd love to be able to connect their Twitter account to Pond so that every time they're sharing a link we can suck it into Pond and have it as a draft contribution for them and then when they come into Pond they can see them and just go, yep, 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 I'll publish those for others to discover. So we don't want to change people's behaviour. If you use Twitter a lot to share your links, we want you to keep to be able to do that. And then we want to use Pond to, to gather some of those things together so that people that are still might be a bit afraid of Twitter um, stumble across them in something like Pond. So in editing your profile, you can add all of your social media links, like your Twitter, your Pinterest, your G+, um, links in there, which makes it easier for people to find you, but it also means that you can easily add your some of your Twitter links or your Pinterest boards or something that you've posted in G Plus into Pond. Because anything with a URL that exists already in the web will happily survive in Pond. 
we want to get more search providers connected in that middle column. Um, the likes of Epic would be a great one. Uh, I have this view of seeing your, even your, your school library system being connected to this. So you can just search in Pond and you'll see the book that's two doors down. Um, Epic would be a great resource to have. Uh, it's diving deep into a lot of um, university repositories and the like. Uh, I mentioned earlier around groups. Uh, we want you to be able to form loose groups or perhaps more formal classroom groups, make them public or private. Uh, ways, we haven't figured this out yet, but ways to earn badges. Uh, people like badges. Uh, their profile might be 80% complete, or they might add they might have had so many mathematics resources that other teachers have liked that they earn some kind of reward for, and, and be recognised for being a great, a great contributor for mathematics. And that helps others discover them in Pond as well. Uh, and touched on earlier, we want to integrate wherever we can. We don't want to duplicate things. Uh, we always want to integrate with existing solutions wherever we can. So last week, NZQA was added to that middle column and Shortly we will have Radio New Zealand added in there with all of their archived audio files and everything else that you'll be able to search and find. So that middle column with search providers is actually constantly growing, growing and changing. And you'll find through there all sorts of resources that you didn't even know existed. Feedback we've talked about, it's really important. Ian wouldn't say this, but the dev team also need positive feedback. They are like kids, so any positive feedback, any thumbs up, smiley faces, send them through, it makes them happy. And happy development team means happy office. Right. So we have got three questions in that Google Doc. If you can, can we go to that Google Doc? Um, the Google Doc can be found in Pond or it's on nfrl.co.nz forward slash ulearn14. Is it ulearn14, Andy? ulearn14 is the end of the Google Docs web link? Yeah. Okay. It might just be easier to find it there. Okay, so we've got three main questions here. What hacks could you use in Pond to personalise it for yourself, your department or your school? And by hacks, we mean anything that can be personalised to kind of work it around. I showed you the Upper Harbour Primary School one, which is the educational suitability tag. Um, the second question is, what features would you like to see in Pond in the future? Autosave. Good idea. <laughs> you saved me. Yeah. Um, and third question is, how could Pond be useful to planning, resourcing and teaching in your school and how could it help you develop as a teacher? Um, that's one of the questions that we started off with at the start of the session. Has anybody got any ideas? Not perhaps for this term coming, but looking ahead to 2015. <coughs> Google Doc. Okay. Nz. And then there's a link there. this Google Doc's going to exist live for some time. Are there any other questions before we wrap it up? Uh, not at right now. Uh, that's something we do have to be very careful about. Uh, massive copyright and property ownership implications of doing that. And that's why we started with Docs. Uh, so we can frame it as a, as a way to upload documents. Um, which are things that you may have already created for your classrooms. Um, when we do get to the stage of perhaps you've filmed a great activity that's just occurred in your classroom and you want to add it to Pond, we'd more likely use an, a third party service to manage that. So it would automatically put it on YouTube and add it to Pond or put it on Vimeo and add it to Pond. Any 
other questions? No? Okay. Can I have a show of hands? Who thinks that they could actually use Pond as of next week when you're back at school? Doing your resourcing, doing your planning. Cool. Wicked. Well, that's the aim. We're hoping that you will actually use it, see its value, get into the habit of using it, because that's always a big thing. One last thing before we go that might help with the habit. On this home page, underneath the search bar, there is a little set pond as your default browser, which means that you can just set it up and on your work computer, that can be your go-to browser screen. Help you get into the habit of it. Yeah, personally, I would, I would love it if uh, something that occurs in the classroom is, where did you find that resource? Oh, I found it in Pond. It's a great place to search for stuff and find stuff that other teachers have been using. Uh, that would be a nice sort of feed-on effect for us. Okay. Now, if there's um, anybody in here who's interested in getting your department or your school or your syndicate or whatever, a small group of you or all of you, into Pond, come via our stand, which is in not this room, but the next room over, and grab some information about the Make a Splash program, and we can start you on that in a couple of weeks. So there's weekly emails with a short video that focuses on one feature a week to kind of slowly introduce you to Pond. But of course, go wild with it if you've got the energy. Um, what else do we need to talk about? Mm. Otherwise, you can follow us on Twitter, N4L, hashtag N4L Pond. Uh, if you're a Twitter user, you can find all sorts of things in there. Of course, this document will be staying open for a little while. It's great to see people adding to it. And here is the QPR code for the evaluation form. Okay, all evaluations are online this year. So if you want to come up and grab this information, otherwise I assume, well, the URL's down here as well. So. I'll just leave this up here, come and grab it, fill out an evaluation form please, and have a fantastic ULEARN. <laughs>